Let's be honest, Helldivers 2 is a blast to play. But moving up into the difficulty, it becomes very hard. And that is why I made this video sharing my experience by using the stealth mechanics. Helldivers 2 is all fun and shenanigans when you start it up. But when you start moving into higher difficulties in Helldivers 2, you'll start to notice that there are more than just fun and shenanigans. There's a lot of depth to the game and hidden mechanics that is left there for you to explore. And one of these left behind mechanics that is pretty underrated, I'd say, and overlooked is stealth. And today I want to talk about why stealth is so important in Helldivers 2. Now, the way I see it, Stealth isn't a gameplay you can enforce and stay within. At some point during your mission, shit will hit the fan. But being aware of stealth and hard works will definitely make your missions easier, and therefore I believe that stealth is a must when it comes to completing Helldivers 2 higher difficulty, and by that I mean difficulty 7 and above. Before we talk about how to use stealth as a mechanic for your advantage, I have to kindly ask you to consider giving me a subscribe and help me on my path towards YouTube Partner. So far, 99% of you aren't subscribed, and making these videos is very time consuming and requires me to prioritize how to spend my time since I am, after all, just a regular family dad with a full-time job and streaming as a hobby. Thanks in advance. Now back to the video. I'll be dividing the enemies up into three different categories, because that's gonna help me when it comes to explaining how you can use stealth and how you can approach with it. The enemies we're gonna use as an example today is gonna be the termites. The first one I'm showing you here is gonna be termites in guard position. Basically, they are standing guard being idle at a POI, just waiting for you to stumble upon them. Then you have the patrols. The patrols will be scattered all over the map. Whenever you get into contact with them, first they will gonna engage upon you, and secondly, they will start calling reinforcement. For the termites, that's gonna be the bot breach. And for the third category, we have what I tend to call for the Horde. These are basically the ones that will show up to the party whenever you're doing either your mission or you're calling in the extract. In other words, you are stationary, you need to be on point to do your duty, therefore you can't retreat, fall back and hide from the enemy, so you have to deal with them. And these can come in in massive numbers. The guarding enemies, the so-called enemies who are standing idle, guarding a POI. They will stay put and never move that spot, unless they are provoked. That means that running around these enemies isn't that hard. And also, they are easy to combat in because you can engage upon them by using stealth. A good way to do this is either crouch or crawl up close to the enemy while you are prone through your orbitals because that will not alert them, which means you will have a higher chance of doing a direct hit. As long as you stay out of sight or you stay in prone, there's going to be a high chance that even the stragglers will not notice you. They will be searching for you after you initiate the orbital strike. Being able to call in your stratagems without actually getting aggro because you are out of line of sight also works for the turrets. This means that as long as you haven't provoked the enemy, and you are still hidden, you call in your sentries, your sentry will get the aggro, not you. Plus, it'll give you time to find the big targets and take those out first. You can combine this with smoke to make up a line of fire where the enemies will not know where the turret is and therefore give the turret more time to take out the enemies before they start swarming it. The patrols is where the stealth mechanic really comes into play. You want to avoid these at all costs. Provoking a patrol will most likely end up in a new bug breach. So therefore, do everything you can to avoid them. Run around in circles, hide behind cover, hit prone, or use the smoke to obscure the vision of the enemy. 
If the patrol should spot you, then try to see if you can actually break the line of sight. You can use the smoke key to blank out the area, which means that the new termites who are going to be spawning in from the bark breach are going to be confused whenever they spawn in. They do not know where you are and they will be searching for you. If they are in the middle of the smoke, most often they're just going to stand still in there. And that's going to give your team more time to call in more stratagems to hit the targets before they spot you. You can also use the smoke to retreat instead, but retreating can be dangerous. Firstly, because you might run into another patrol, and if that happens and you have to take up that fight, then you're suddenly standing out now with two bug breaches, and that means more enemies, and suddenly you're standing there with a the goddamn horde. Talking about the horde, here you can also use the stealth mechanics in your advantage for your squad when you're trying to combat them and erase them from the map. What we tend to do is, we try to have one or two guys kiting the horde around, so we can funnel them all together, so they're more clustered in. Then you have two other guys who are going to be breaking line of sight, that either by running away or by using a smoke. By doing this, these two guys, breaking line of sight, re-engaging into stealth, while they do not have any enemies on the tails anymore, they will have an easier time calling in their stratagems to take out the enemies. And since the enemies now are bunched together, they are going to be able to deliver way more damage on the battlefield compared to if everybody just starts scattering around and tossing in orbitals and eagles and clusters wherever they can. A strategy we've started to use a lot during higher difficulties in my squad is smoke combined with the sentries. Basically, whenever we need to try and disengage, make distance or just are in a rush due to the timer, We'll toss down the smoke to break the line of sight, then opposite the side of the termites, as of the smoke wall, we're going to dump down a lot of turrets, which means whatever the termites is going to slowly pass through the smoke, they do not know where we are, they can't see the turrets, and the minute they break out of the smoke, the turrets are there ready to take them out. This will actually give us a lot of time to make greater gap distance between the enemies and us, and in most often situations, we are going to be disengaged from them. Now, this isn't a guaranteed success, of course. So, yeah, there is going to be moments where you just have to take up the fight and deal with the entire horde coming in suddenly. But hey, that's where the fun begins, right? Just a couple more tips here for using the stealth mechanic in your advantage is whenever you drop into the map for the first time, then I would strongly suggest that the minute you get out of the drop pod, hit prone, because if there are enemies within your vicinity, the chance of them spotting you is going to be way lower, which means you're going to have time now to call in your support guns, your backpacks, all that you need before you have to engage in combat. This is really important when you get into high difficulties, because even the smallest patrol of enemies can start all-out warfare with charges, bile titans and everything. And if you end up in this situation without having your support weapons or your backpacks, it can quickly become a fight of your survival. The same follows if you need to do resupply. Call it in, everybody within the squad, just get into prone and wait for it to fall down. There should be a patrol nearby. Again, the chance of them spotting you is gonna be smaller. And lastly, remember to pin the enemies you haven't engaged with, because this is gonna give valuable information for your squad. Now I do have to emphasize again, this is based upon my experience. This is not information I've gathered for the internet. So therefore, this is my opinion upon the stealth mechanics of the game. You might have another opinion, suggestions, or maybe you know something that I haven't talked about in the video when it comes to the stealth mechanics. If that is the case, please let us know down in the comments and be nice, please. And with that said, this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Until next time. Goodbye.